Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are all really well. Today's video is something that, I don't know, might be a little bit controversial, but I know that these videos go down so well. And whenever I do one of these styles of videos, um, I always get feedback to do more. So today's video is pieces I would never buy and what I would replace them with. And the premise of this video is to help you build and understand your wardrobe. Of course, this is just my opinion, but if you like my style and want to build that really strong wardrobe that can easily mix and match together, then this video will hopefully be for you. So the first item I would never buy is very florally, bright, patterned blouses. And as always with this style of video, it's never about the price, it's about the item itself. Um, we could have a really expensive item and it still be something I would never buy and equally a really affordable item that I would buy multiple of. So floral blouses I would definitely avoid. Anything with quite garish patterns and prints. I just for one feel like they're not that wearable. Once you've worn it, you've worn it. I feel like they are a little bit done now. I feel like we're kind of over that. Personally, I feel like that basic capsule wardrobe with those classic pieces, with those kind of block patterns and prints or slightly more minimal patterns and prints lend themselves so much better to timeless dressing, to wearing on repeat, to styling in multiple ways, and to dressing up, dressing down. And I just don't feel like these floral blouses do that. So I actually have two examples of what you could do instead. Um, so my first is this beautiful lily silk blouse. You may have seen this in a recent video. When I say floral bright print blouses, I don't mean you have to avoid all detail and have to go for the most simple piece. You can go for things um, like this with a beautiful kind of neckline. This bow tie detail adds a lot of interest to the piece. It kind of elevates it. You can style it in different ways. You could just have it hanging loose or you could tie it really high around the neck and make more of a formal look. Um, and it just adds interest while still being very wearable and versatile and much more of a classic piece. Alternatively, I don't think you have to avoid patterns and prints altogether. For example, I've got this set from Asino, which I bring out every summer, and it is more of a minimal pattern. The pattern carries through, which I think is really nice. It's also just two-tone. There's not too much fuss going on. I think, it again, it lends itself to that more classic feel. I think this is something I'll be able to hold on to in my wardrobe and won't feel dated. Um, then you can style it up, style it down. I think with things like white shorts and white jeans look really good. Um, and then you could go for black wide leg trousers, um, even like a kind of matching beige wide leg trouser, straight leg trouser. Um, but if you still want to do the pattern, you can. Just, I would say, keep it more minimal, maybe just two colors. Um, I personally prefer a more neutral, but I still think you could do this kind of toned down version in a colour as well if you prefer. So the next thing I would never buy is too much fussy hardware and embellishment on bags. I personally have never ever liked this look. I think we're seeing a resurgence of it, definitely as we're kind of doing that early naughty style a lot in that kind of Gen Z sort of way. Um, we're seeing a resurgence of these bags, lots of studs, um, lots of tassels maybe, loads of detail, lots of embellishment. It's, it's too much, it's too fussy. I honestly think they look a little bit tacky and I've just never ever gotten into this look, whether it was kind of early noughties look or now it's coming back in recent years. I, it, it's just been something I've never been a fan of because it doesn't lend itself to classic dressing and like I say, I do think it looks a little bit tacky. And again, a bit like what I was saying with the blouses is you don't need to avoid hardware and embellishment altogether. You don't need to take things to the absolute extreme. You can do hardware and detail and even logos in subtle ways. I have many bags with logos on, but they'll just be that one plain logo. Usually it's the logo as the buckle itself. So this is my Demelier one. Very classic, very simple. It has got the gold details on, but as you can see, 
very minimal. There's not anything going on other than that clasp um, and the details at the top here. We've not got studs, we've not got rhinestones, we've not got logos emblazoned everywhere. Um, it's just got that very classic minimal look. And again, if we're talking about longevity on our wardrobes and getting cost per wear, um, then this is the way to go. So another thing I would really avoid is silly slogans. So honestly, don't mind a bit of a print or a bit of a slogan of some sort, um, but those silly slogans, honestly, even done in an ironic way, I don't like them. I just don't think we need to be um, incorporating jokes into our clothing. Um, for me, I just I just don't get it. I would never do it. It's just a big no-no for me. There's loads of things with kind of silly, jokey phrases on. It's like when people have kind of mugs and slogans around the house. I would never do that either um, that are a bit silly. So definitely one to avoid. However, I think you can still go for subtle things. For example, I've got my cap on. It's just kind of got the brand logoing and name on here. You don't have to completely go the opposite way, but you can just do this in a more subtle, simple kind of way. So this cap just says Varley on the front. I've got things like um, bags from brands that have brand names and maybe something underneath, like a small little slogan or a caption um, or a quote maybe. But I think it's just about avoiding those kind of big, bold, stupid catchphrases that people have on clothing. Another thing I never ever buy is anything that's too cropped. And by that, I mean super duper cropped. I don't mind a little crop. I'm not talking about this length of jacket. This is a bit of a cropped style. It falls almost at the waistline. I'm not talking about those kind of things. I'm talking about super duper cropped things. I think especially in things that don't necessarily need to be really, really cropped like cardigans or jackets. They don't need to sit right up here. I think anything, to be honest, anything that really shows the stomach, I just don't really like that look. Um, it's not for me personally. I don't think it stands the test of time. It just doesn't work for me and I never buy those pieces. Instead, I would do a bit of a crop. You can see that this top cuts off quite short. It's a bit shorter than this cardigan. And then I would always, always, always pair that with something high-waisted. If you go too cropped, then the high-waisted just doesn't even work to sit with it. So go for something a little bit cropped by all means. This works really nicely. And then I'd always pair that with something high-waisted. Another thing I would never buy are these really shiny puffer coats. No, 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 they are just not for me. Um, these high shine, like PVC style metallic puffer coats, honestly, I just feel like, again, these look really, really tacky, um, I hate to say, but they do, I would just never buy it. It doesn't have that classic look at all. I just feel like when you think of classic icons of style, they would never wear something like this, especially like a kind of shorter version of this high shine puffer. Um, again, they're not very timeless, they're not very chic. They don't have that elegant understated feel to them. So obviously I do own puffer coats, we all need them. This is just one example of the puffer coats I have. It's this H&M one and I've got a few, I've got some that are very, very puffy, like proper puffer coats. This is just one example of a more quilted style coat and you can see that it's a lot more matte. It's got a bit of a sheen to it, but it's not got that kind of PVC high shine um, patent feel to it. It's, it's a lot more subtle and I think that's a theme that's running throughout this video is the more subtle things are, the better they are, I think. Basically toned down, all of the things I would never buy and, and you kind of come across a winner. So this coat, pretty matte. It's a nice, long, loose style. I just feel like this has a much more classy feel to it. And again, it's H&M. You don't need to spend a fortune on these pieces. It's not about price, it's about style. So another thing I would never buy are these country style heritage capes. 
You see a lot of people wearing these to the races, that kind of thing. To me, they almost evoke a cosplay type of thing where you are dressing up to try and be an English country woman, that kind of look. And honestly, again, I do think that whole vibe is a little bit tacky to, to dress in that way. People who are these English country women don't actually dress like this. So I would definitely avoid those capes. It just feels a little bit too try hard and almost kind of playing a character rather than just effortless dressing. Now, I don't think capes are awful in general. I actually don't mind a cape. You can find some really chic styles of simple capes out there. Again, it's all about toning it back. No faux fur, no checks and, and heritage tweeds, things like that. Just keep it nice, simple wool cape. Um, I think Massimo Dutti and Cos do some really nice chic toned down versions. I've seen people style them with like a nice relaxed wide leg jean. Um, I think they can look really chic. It's just wearing them in a certain way. Next is multicolored jewelry. And by that, I mean jewelry with loads and loads of um, colors in lots of different things. Um, I feel like there's too much going on again. It doesn't feel classic to me. Um, I don't mind color. I think color needs to be done in a right way, in a way that's maybe tonal, a little bit more subtle, um, and just doing this multicolored jewelry just feels a little bit too garish. And yeah, it's just not a look that I love. That said, I do have some colorful pieces of jewelry. For example, I have these amazing earrings from Soru and they're like a bright, bright green with gold in the middle. You can definitely add some color into your jewelry, but I would just do it in a more tonal way. Maybe just one or two colors within the jewelry. We've got the gold and the green. I think we've got enough going on here. And I think because of the simplicity in the colors that we're not mixing and matching too much, they have a more timeless kind of wearable feel. Um, and I just think they look a little bit more chic. And if you didn't want to do color, I've also got this really nice bracelet. It's Susan Kaplan vintage one, and it's just got some pearls in it basically, but it still creates that illusion of color because the pearl is this beautiful kind of off whitey shade, champagne -y shade, and then you've got the gold as well. So if you don't want to go down the colorful route at all, you can still add a little bit of interest and difference within your jewelry just by going for some more subtle tones. Finally is a platform heel sandal. Now I know a lot of people like to wear these and I understand why. It's because they do have the heel but the platform makes them more comfortable. I just feel like these have been done so, so much. I do think they have a little bit of a cheap feel to them, a cheaper look to them. They don't feel very classy or elegant to me, a little bit clumpy and heavy. Just, just don't have a particularly elegant feel and I do think they ruin a look. If you've got a nice dress on, I think these just bring all the heaviness and chunkiness down to the bottom of the shoe. Um, so what would I do instead? So I have two options. If you still want to wear a heel, but don't like the big heel height, and that's why you're going for these kind of platform sandals, you can go from much flatter style, like this pair from Reformation. Um, I absolutely love these. I know I'm gonna be wearing them a lot. I actually got them maybe about a month ago in preparation for spring summer dressing because I think they're gonna be so useful. I've already styled them a lot in my videos, but they're just very flat, but they also have a heel, but they're a low heel. Um, and I actually think a low heel can look a lot more elegant, a lot more effortless. Um, but you've still got that heel to them, so they give that kind of feeling and illusion of a higher heel. Um, also, they've just got very delicate straps, and I think this color as well works so nicely with everything, but I do think they do these shoes in black too, um, and I would say they're true to size, and Reformation do the half sizes as well, which I think is really useful. And if you did want to go for a slightly higher heel, then I would go for something like this. So these are an old pair now from Massimo Dutti, so I'll try and find something similar. But basically, these have a sturdier heel. They're not a spin 
spindly tall heel and I think that's another reason people wear those platform sandals is because of that kind of chunkiness in the heel. So you can always go for a wider heel. You could even go for something chunkier than this if you want to. Still more of a block heel. Um, They've got a bit of an open toe, but they keep your foot quite enclosed. And the sling back again, just makes them feel a little bit more elegant. So I'd say the key really is to avoid that big, big platform at the front and all of that chunkiness. And I would definitely, definitely avoid that style in a black as well, because that just makes them look even heavier. So just before I finish, um, I have a couple of questions to ask you actually, because I'm just trying to do a bit of research, gauge where everybody's from, your age, where you live, um, just so I can really cater and tailor my content a little bit more. I would also love to know your climate. So if you could leave me a comment below, just put your age, where you live and what the climate's like. If it's hot, cold, um, I don't need loads of specific details, but if you just give me a rough indication, then I can really help um, narrow that content down and it helps me when creating links for certain countries and things like that. So that would be so useful if you could do that before you leave. Also, if you did like the video, please press the thumbs up button. That really, really helps me out. It helps to know what you like so that I can do more of that and then less of what you don't like. So um, please press the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video um, and let me know any other comments you have about these pieces. And if you wanna see more of these as well, tell me below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.